Hello everyone and welcome to ToffeeTube. My name is Toffee and today on ToffeeTube we're going to be discussing Cannes Film Festival 2022 red carpet outfits. This year we saw a lot of puffy gowns and sheer dresses with a lot of luxurious jewelry. No doubt that coronavirus had a huge impact on the world's point of view and one of them is fashion. We see a lot of colorful and maximal styles. Most of the jewelry is bold and iconic, and notable stars wore the necklaces from the back if they were showing up with a back open look. Today I'm gonna talk about the part 3 review of the red carpet. If you still haven't watched the review of parts 1 and 2, feel free to check this out on my channel. I put the link in the description and also in the card section. Please stay and watch the video till the end and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. Sharon Stone showed up with a blue-white gown from Dolce Gabbana, a fitted, strappy dress with an attached skirt. I don't know why, but the mandala print reminds me of the Persian tiles. The color pairing and the method are kind of similar to what there are in the traditional Persian crafts and tilings. However, it's beautiful. The color combination is eye-catching and there were fewer printed gowns like this on this year's can red carpet. The look had some revealing, although it took some time to remove the white train from the gown, it finally resulted in a dramatic moment. The silhouette totally changed. From distance, it seems like a simple printed white blue dress, but when you get closer to it, you figure out the stunning Swarovski crystals beaded on it. It looks rich and chic. She also completed her look with a pair of blue teardrop earrings and a ring. I like that she didn't insist on using maximal necklaces or other extra features for this look. The gown already has a rich embellishment of beading and prints, so it's nice that the look is being kept simple while it has its own maximalism for itself. Cara Delevingne showed up with a black look from Ballman. She wore a mesh bandage dress with a black strapless crossover pattern gown over it. Also, the bottom has a train attaching to it that is nicely belowing the ground. There is a triangle corduroy velvet panel attached to the front and a zipper band line to the bottom from the back to hide the stuff if you know what I mean. She completed her look with sheer opera gloves. This is a clever choice. Also, I think it would be exciting to see crisscross pattern gloves too, while these sheer ones already give the vibe as well. She attended the red carpet with the Ballman creative director Olivia Rustin. Head to toe, he wore white, so it resulted in a good combination and eye-catching moments. From the side view, the bodice gives the feeling of two cat horns, which kinda reminds me of Doja Cat's Scaparelli look from Billboard Awards. She selected minimal jewelry and with this short hair had a nice hairdo to complete the whole look. After all, this is a nice look to wear as a model. I personally don't expect actresses to wear such a gown. So in this case, this was a unique luxury style to be shown up on the can red carpet. Kristen Stewart showed up with a colorful long sleeve crop top and a white skirt featuring a big bow on the front from Chanel. The turtleneck crop top and the wee waist skirt made an asymmetric look. Now we are seeing a horizontal line from up and a V line from the middle body. I preferred if they could be synced with each other to see two horizontal lines instead. I like how the bare midriff is causing to show the abs. The white skirt made a good silhouette out of her from the front, but from the side view, I'm gonna say no to that. It made the whole look so deformed, like she's hardly carrying something with herself. Also, the skirt fabric seems wrinkled. It looks like it needs to be ironed and already seems cheap. The skirt has 5 bottom waistbands from the back, which I believe is too much. They could be a maximum of 3 to prevent it from looking sloppy. I'm not sure why she even chose to wear such a skirt to this red carpet. Overall, the crop top is a well embellished choice and eye-catching, while the skirt ruined it and is a big no. Sarah Sampoio attended the can red carpet with a black custom-made sheer dress from Pinko. Let me tell you something, I like the floor sweeping feature of this dress, but when she showed up on the stairs, I liked it more. It literally was show stopping. The fabric on the upper body part intercrossed each other to the waist and then there is a fabric belt that separates the skirt and the upper body which is done properly. The back of the bodice is sheer and has a back zipper. It is also well synced with the bottom. Then we reach the sheer skirt that nicely shows her leg which is nice. The tool trims at the end of the skirt were proper and took it to another level. It's simple and sexy at the same time. You don't see extra efforts to show off the total look. The amount of jewelry used is enough. The beautiful necklace that is from Mexico glowed along with the black gown. The tight back hair spiced up the look. Although it's simple, it's proper and digestible. 
Sarah showed up with another look from the Zohar Murad Spring Summer 2022 collection, a regular X off shoulder dress including cape sleeves. The upper body details are not so different from her previous look, with fabrics crossing each other. This skirt also was a win for her look, as it has a high slit from the front and sweeps the ground to make it more dramatic. I like the white shade of sombers on the gown, it's eye-catching, the pleated concept made it look different from other floor sweeping dresses, although in some cases it looks like a cheap fabric or it maybe needs to be ironed. I guess this is more referred to the stylist job, preparing her for the photography, cause when she twirls it or stands proper, you don't get this feeling. Or maybe it's because of the lowerings. I don't know. Her jewelry in this look, again from Mexico, goes well on her. I preferred if she had applied a red lipstick, but I consider this as a keeping balance or maybe making a difference from the previous look. Natasha Pulley attended with a pleated gown and cape shoulders sweeping the floor and the sheer cutouts from Bowman. The look gives the vibe of the monarchy era. It looks expensive and elegant. I have some big issues with this kind of neglected elastic look waistlines. I wish there was a good way span to hide the line or to complete the style. The V plunging neckline, the cutouts and the high slits made a good symmetric design and are eye catching. I like that the wind held and made some dramatic moments from this look. Nadine Leopold showed up with a smoke grey chiffon gown from Zohar Murad. A look with a lot of details proving Zohar Murad's signatures. The ruched fabric is wrapped around the upper torso to hide the stuff if you know what I mean. And they are nicely engaged with the braided macrame and made a good symmetric design. The macrames are hung down from the waist giving a good eye catching moment for the skirt with two high slits. I believe the strongest point of this look is the cape shoulders. When walking, it literally gives the feeling of being a winner to you. The fabric is weightless, so when you twirl, it moves like the wind and makes the whole look so dramatic. I preferred if the waistline and the top were a little higher. Although Nadine is a tall model, this low waist kind of skirt made her look short according to her real height, and the top gives the vibe as if the macrames are pulling it down with their weight. Maybe it's because of the cape shoulders or the concept of this not simple maxi dress. Whatever it is, I wish I could push this whole dress a little up. It kind of feels like it's going to be taken down from her body. Carla Bruni wore a lilac celine dress and dazzled in a glittering look. This is one digestible look among other maximal gowns. The color is fresh and the silhouette is a good one for her body type. She completed her look with a colorful necklace from Bulgari and matched it with the cuff bracelet and ring, which was something we saw less of it on this red carpet. The necklace was a unique chromatic color palette enriched with five concise matching the color of its dress and intertwined with other precious color stones. It's so energizing and refreshing. The whole look is more than enough and eye-catching at the same time. Naomi Campbell showed up with a black low-cut gown from Valentino. A plunging neck dress with white bows on the shoulder that are tied to the top and attached to the back. I really like the feather detail. It made a nice 3D look and is well attached to the dress in proper points and places. You don't feel something is wrong with it. The number of attached feathers is enough and it took it to another level. I like how both sides of the torso have cutouts so the significant skin revealing according to the whole black bottom detail made a good balance to the look. And let's not forget that Naomi is one of those models who exactly know how to work to present the best out of a look. She also completed her style with Bulgari jewelry, it's shimmering, it's luxurious and is really show-stopping. Adriana Lima this time showed up with a sheer dress from Roberta Cavalli's Fall Winter 2022 collection. The jungle print skirt and the straps are so Roberta Cavalli. By keeping the nature of the brand, the green velvet made the whole look so sexy, which I believe was not really needed to be that sexy. Why so sexy? Contrary to her previous style, in which there were a baby bomb showing and dramatic draped fabrics, this one really led me to the question of ain't it too much? I know she's just presenting to cherish her maternity period since Rihanna was the first one who actually initiated this method. But I guess if there were a sheer to cover the bodies or even a jacket to put on the back, it could surprise us more to better look at the dress and will make us curious to see what are the details. The bottom is digestible, but I guess there has to be done some works to the upper part. Like if you're trying to showcase the maternity, just show up the belly. Now this look more seems like a bare bodies and a sheer skirt. Hina Khan, the Indian actress, attended the red carpet in a lavender gown from Sophie Couture, a strapless gown with a high slit and peplum detail. 
We saw lots of off-shoulder puffy gown moments on this year's red carpet. But in this look, the peplum with its dramatic ruffles took this gown to another level and made it unique from all other looks. The feather embellished detail on the gown is eye-catching. They've been properly attached to the fabric. Not a few to say that they can't be noticed, not a lot to make it sloppy and cheap. Just so enough. I like this princess look. The color of the gown well matched to her and made a good contrast according to her body color tone. Overall, she was so successful with this look. On the other hand, she had another statement at this year's can in a dress of skating couture. She showed up in an ice blue satin high slit gown that has a V-plunging neckline and is worn over a sheer with rich embellishments, especially on the neck. This style completely reminds me of Priyanka Chopra's black dress. They hardly have some differences. To be honest, if I had to compare these two with each other, I'd say Priyanka's dress is even chicer. The ice blue satin made some wrinkles to result in not good shape. I preferred if the shoulders were a little accentuated to give a powerful vibe. The finishing is not proper, and the detailing on the underlayer sheer can be easily seen from the top fabric. I mean, this design is so perfect. The cuts and stitches are all in a proper place, and even the color pairing is excellent, but the wrong fabric choice ruined it all and made it look cheap. Bella Hadid surprised all with her vintage Versace look, a black costume from 1987 that originally is designed by Jenny Versace. The style includes a strapless ruched georgette bodice combined with a black velvet skirt completed with a large taffeta bow at the waist that is closed at the back. It's not the first time that Bella is showing up in a vintage dress. Also recently she showed up with a vintage Dior gown from 1959 at the Princess Trust Gala. This time again she surprised us with a black dramatic look. Since she killed it last year with that avant-garde scaparelli look, I personally was counting down to see what is she going to wear this year. Honestly, I didn't expect something would beat that look. But with this style she showed up this year, oh my god, defeated them all. One part of the bow is wrapped around the waist and the other is totally placed at the back. This already made a difference to all other bow waist designs that we saw on the red carpet. I like the combination of the fabrics resulted in a good way of design. I preferred if she would wear the opera gloves as well. I don't exactly get why didn't she do this, but it could make them look so much chicer. I like that she wore teardrop earrings. Simple and enough. She didn't use extra accessories to steal the attention. From all the detail and perfection in this look, it's a good point to mention that Jenny Versace is still one of the best leaders in the fashion industry. Well, I guess that's it. Stay notified, I will absolutely upload further look reviews. I'd be so glad to know what is your opinion about these looks. Please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. So, see you soon.